Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm excited to show you how to paint this cute little cottage fantasy scene on an 8x10 stretched double primed canvas. I want to show you a few of my favorite colors that we're going to be using today. Here we've got the light blue violet, in the middle turquoise blue, and on the right bright aqua green. So these three colors are what I'm using today, but you can definitely use other uh, simpler colors if you don't have these ones. A few other colors I'm going to be using today are titanium white, neon yellow cool and warm, neon pink, and Mars black. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on the background. I'm going to start from the top, work my way down to the bottom. And for that, I'm going to be using one of my filbert brushes. I've got a number 30 filbert. I'm just going to go ahead and get my canvas a little bit wet first to start. That always helps me spread my acrylic much easier. You can do the same thing by using a fine misting spray bottle. And you can also keep your palette moist and from drying out too quickly with a fine misting spray bottle as well. Okay, so at the top, I'm gonna to start with my turquoise blue nice sweeping strokes back and forth starting to work that paint out as we go down and i'll just get the top up there make sure all those little bits are covered and then as i run out i'm going to go right into my turquoise i'm going to line it up halfway on the blue and halfway on the white canvas i'm going to start pulling back and forth Take a bit of white this time. Okay, so a little bit of white and turquoise green. If you get any of those little chunkies, it's just sometimes in the bottle, little bits can dry from air getting in. You can just gently wipe them off. Okay, I'm just gonna go all the way down. And then go right back into my turquoise blue, a little bit of the green, aqua green. Okay, then I'm gonna wash my brush out. The next step is drying the canvas off. Okay, once we dry this all off, then we can come in with a little bit of our blue violet for our uh, water line in the back the horizon line and then work our way into adding a little bit of the neon yellow over the turquoise green and we'll get sort of a faint impression of some green grass outside and around our cottage okay so now that this is all dry i'm going to take a smaller filbert brush this one's a number eight and i'm going to go right into my blue violet and a little bit of white. I'm going to add my horizon line right about here. So just back and forth, a little bit more white in there. So this will give us sort of a foggy, misty looking background and see Just softening with a little bit of water. Okay, then a little bit of the blue turquoise, blue violet, and the tiniest bit of black. Barely any at all. I'm gonna work that out of my brush and then right above the horizon, I'll pull a little very faint line like this and that's just enough to show more of the horizon line back there wash all that out of your brush dry it off and now we're going to come in with a little bit of yellow 
and the yellow over top of the turquoise is going to give us a beautiful whimsical green color for our grass. Now we're not going to paint little bits of grass. We're just going to apply color. Just a little light scumble. I think the colors in this already are so pretty. Just like this, it actually looks like it could be a uh, ocean scene, like with the water turning this pretty bright yellowy green color. Looks like somewhere in the Caribbean to me. Okay, so just a little bit more. A little bit of white now. Got a little water drip there. It's okay. Now I'm going to go ahead with a clean brush. I really like these colors, by the way. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below letting me know. I think they all look really pretty together. I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of the blue. I've got both blues in there. Turquoise blue and a little bit of blue violet. A little bit of white. Again, with my number eight filbert brush. And I'm just going to wiggle shaky. See how shaky I am? Just to add some wispy looking clouds in here. Now see how dry that is? All I'm doing is I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of water. Don't push too hard. Don't overwork one area and then just soften. Now depending on what kind of clouds you're going for, you're gonna uh, paint, paint them differently, right? But this is just what I'm going for today. A very lazy, dreamy, romantic cottage scene. I imagine somewhere in England, Cornwall. The other, well, I'm half Italian and half uh, British, so I've yet to visit um, England, and I'd love to someday. Um, but until then, enjoy painting what to me I feel like it looks like or the way it makes me feel when I look at photos and, and videos of it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is start painting our little cottage. And I'm going to switch over to a flat brush. It's got more of a square shape to it. I've got this one here. You could even use one a little bit smaller. This one's a number 10. Now, this is from a set I just got at uh, Walmart in Canada. So I'm going to use this flat brush here because it's square and I can get more of a square uh, symmetrical look to uh, the building in this cottage. So I'm just going to get my brush a little bit wet to start. And I'm going to take some white, some blue, and a little bit of black. A little bit more black there. I just want a dark base to start. And then our highlights and uh, our house will look more 3D when we build up from a darker base. Okay, so what we want to do is have the roof come up partially on uh, the, the sky there above the horizon. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to make about two inches long line right there. And then on a slant, I'm going to go down about an inch. You want to go down on the other side of the house and make a peak like this. Looks like a triangle. And I'm going to go across, join those together. And then we've got a little bit of just off the back end. This one doesn't go straight. It's a little bit of a slant. Just gonna get my brush a little bit wet again. Reload my brush here. When I get my brush wet, it's definitely just the, like the tiniest bit. You don't need a lot of water. You don't need a lot of paint. I think most of the time, beginners are adding too much and it's really, really normal. We all do it when we're first starting. We think we need more paint and more water. 
Okay, so we've got the two inch line, roughly two inches. It can be shorter and I wouldn't make it any longer because it's gonna overpower the painting. And then about an inch down here, connect the two and then we're gonna pull down in lines like this to fill this in. And I'm gonna take a little bit of white and blue now. It's in shadow on this side. And I'm just gonna, you can turn your brush this way if you want. We're gonna pull some lines here. Don't worry about the edges. We're gonna um, take a little bit of black here. Once you've done your lines, you wanna come in under the roof line underneath, right? So we're seeing the shadow of the soffit. And then a line down like this. And then we'll have a little window. Okay, less is more. Just little dabs for indications of windows. And right here, I'm going to add a shadow underneath the roof line. And then I'm going to take white, blue, a little bit of water. And I'm just going to start tap, 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 tap. Kind of on an angle. So this is just the brush technique I want you guys to follow. See, I'm going with a slant of the roof. Okay, and then I'm going to pull right, under, right underneath the shadow of the roof line. And bring this down a little lower. And same with this side. I'm going to bring this down a little bit lower. We're going to have some flowers around this area too. Then white. And just simply pull across. I'm not going to, you know, spend too much time making everything look like it's overly detailed. If you want, you can turn your brush this way and create little lines. If you want it to look more like siding, it would have to dry a little bit more for me to add um, more of the detail. I'm gonna add a little line here that comes out a little bit further and then start tapping in. So pay attention to how I'm holding my brush when I'm painting certain things. Okay, line your brush with some white and pull across. And then just a few little taps like this for those shingles to make it look more like it's, you know, staggered how shingles are, then just kind of alternate, turn your brush over. See how I'm loading my brush too? Just working on adding it to the very end and tip of my brush. So we've got a separate little line that comes down here. And then you're just gonna leave a dark space there and if you happen to go over it or you don't have one, just go back to that dark gray color. 
can add some along there as well. Is it sides in shadow? Let that roof hang over just a little bit more. So see how using a flat brush like this is really, really helpful. And then down here, you know, we're going to have our some flowers and trees so and bushes so we need a darker base so i'm just going to use what i've got here on my brush and just tap along just a little bit of that black it doesn't have to be the same amount of black you're adding everywhere it's better to have some lighter areas and some darker areas We'll have like some vines and stuff maybe growing up there. Now what we do want to add is a little chimney right here and the same width of this brush, number 10. I would say this is a, a half inch brush. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to add a few windows on either side. I'm going to take some black with my blue turquoise. And then maybe right up here, we'll have a door and maybe some stairs. another window here these big windows letting all that beautiful light in okay then i'm going to tap what's left in my brush get this little cottage cozy cottage by the sea just nestled in there and i'm going to take some white now without washing my brush off And add that to the, the little stairs. I think it would be kind of pretty to have some turquoise trim on here on either side of the window. And a little bit here on those side ones. To get that shape back, if you're losing that shape in your brush, just gently wiggle and slide back into your paint. Take a little bit of white. Now, if you want, you can use a little liner brush. I encourage you to use what you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna wait for that to dry a little bit and come over here to the chimney where I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, orange, a little bit of pink over top of um, this dark base here and it'll look more like brick. So the whole thing, and then I'll take a little bit of white, mix that in, 
and add light on that half of the chimney. Washing my brush out, I'm gonna take a little bit of black, making sure I don't have a lot of water in my brush. I'm just gonna go along the top of the chimney like that. And just add a little bit, a little bit more there for shadows. And back over to my white with just a touch of that gray. I'm going to turn my brush this way now. Tap, tap, tap. So we're creating sort of like a grid, but on an angle. That's going to give us even more of the shingle look. And just off the edge of the house. And that was a little bit wet, so I'm just going to correct that. Just clean up the edge here. Take some more white, brighten this in between the windows, just like holes, same as here. Then on the other side, for another bit of a shadow color, a little bit of blue and white. Okay, so I'm going to dry the house off and then add um, more highlights to this side and a little bit more white trim around the windows and the door. Okay, a little bit of neon yellow warm with my white. And we'll get a nice warm sunny highlight here. So when you, when you tint your white with certain colors and temperatures, you can really change the way the light feels. I'm going to turn my brush this way to sneak in here and get a little bit more control in this little area and let's add some to the stairs just a little bit here on the chimney And just little taps inside the windows and the door.
kind of have a little bit of light inside the windows too if you want. And then I'm going to come back and just freshen up this turquoise trim. I like to put it a little bit dark in here. Okay, I'm going to go across the top, add that trim there, there. And then a little bit down. Okay, so I think that we're ready to start working on the foliage, landscaping here around the cottage. And I like using a little mop brush for that. You can use a mop brush. Um, I've got a little oval round one here, oval or round. You can also use some filbert brushes, um, but this is what I'm gonna use right now. And I'm gonna just take a little bit of my neon yellow warm and cool and I'm going to start tapping so this will give me a different different temperatures over top of this charcoaly gray color and then a little bit of sunlight back there see how important it is to add the layers. And here it's going to be a little bit more in shadow. So we can take a little bit of just a little bit of black here with that yellow, mix it up. And we can make more of like an, an olive green and have some shadow here and then if it's not the right amount of shadow once it's dry we can add another layer so now with a little bit of water my brush I'm going to add a shadow little shadows here a little bit more of the black a little tap and some shadows all the way off the canvas. Maybe a little, a little bit on this side too. This is going to make a difference in the lighting in your paintings when you add these little shadows here and there. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is add some little pink flowers. Tap, tap, tap. Some over top of the green and yellow here that we made. And some right on the white house because you can see we get more of that true pink color. And then a little bit here, it's gonna dry a bit darker. So a little bit of sun hitting this area here. to cool that off and give it the shadow shade, <laughs> shadow and shade, a little bit of blue violet. Let's take a little bit of that turquoise blue and add a bit of that in there too for some shadows. Maybe we've got some delphiniums growing up the side there. How charming and sweet is that? I am like a cottage fanatic. If I could, I mean, a lot of people want a castle 
or a huge mansion. Castles are so neat as well and I love all, all things kind of fairy tale like but for what I want to live in I love a fairy tale type of cottage. It's overgrown flower gardens, roses just kind of messy and spilling over the fence and the pathways. Okay, so I really like the way that's looking. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of white and warm yellow. And I'll have some more little flowers coming down here. Add a little bit of white, a little bit. And turn your brush sideways to make different shapes. And I'm going to take a larger brush. I'm going to get out some light olive green. I'm also going to be adding luminous rose to my palette. Add a little bit right there next to my pink. With a dry one inch oval mop brush, I'm going to take a little bit of black and the light olive green, tap, tap, tap together. And I'm going to create a big old flower bush here in the foreground. some flowers. I don't know. Let's just make up our own beautiful little cottage by the sea and add all the flowers that we want. With these ones back here, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow warm, light olive green with just a tiny bit of white. tapping to soften that. I'm going to take my number eight filbert brush, a little bit of white and that yellow warm. And create little scoops like this. or some light hitting the path. Need just a little bit more of a shadow, some shade right here under that, in between these steps. And then a few shadows along the path. I think it would look kind of pretty too if um, we add little dabs of uh, pink in here and maybe bring in a fence and then add some more uh, roses over top and spilling over the fence. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to use my uh, filter brush for that. And I'll take a little bit of pink, rose, and white. And these ones are going to just be kind of back here, little blobs. Don't overpaint, just little half circles here and there. We'll bring it up high because our fence here is in the foreground and we're really trying to create that uh, perspective. And we can use the rest 
to just sort of add light pastel pinky flowers on either side path. And a little bit more white and the neon pink to add some sunlight to these ones. I've got roses on my mind because I was just out in my garden cutting my roses and making little uh, bouquets and adding little vases around the house. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with a fence. We're just keeping that, you know, kind of blurry and impressionistic. We need those blurry, messy ones, um, as well as a few that are a little bit more in detail. But don't worry, we're not going to do anything um, too intimidating today. I want to make this very beginner friendly for all levels. So paint at your own pace and your own ability and comfort. With a clean brush, I'm going to take white, blue, and just a little bit of black. If there's a bit of green in there, that's just fine. So we'll just make, you can paint your fence whatever color you want. This is, I want a white pick a fence, but this is gonna be the base. So I'm gonna have one fence post here. Need a lot more paint than that. Now, if you want, you can add, make it like a real picket fence and have those peaked tops on them. Make them as close together as you want. And if there's anything you don't like, you can hide it with flowers. Um, I'll just keep going. I'm just going to add my fence post and then I'll come back after and add the tops. What a fun little painting this is turning into being. You just never know where you're going to get your inspiration from for a painting. It all started with just being out in my garden. And now I'm passing it on to you guys. Gardens really do give back in many ways. See how it's important to have a little bit of roses and that color peeking through there. Make sure your fence posts are not see-through. <laughs> I 
I'm going to start to make them a little bit shorter now. And then I'm going to add some white inside of them. And making them start to get shorter so that we feel some perspective. They didn't get much shorter, did they? We can make them taller here, just a little bit, if we wanted, but we also need to have our board in between. We could just, it's the easiest just to go right through there, and because we still have to go over uh, the top. And I'll add another one down here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my blue and white and go inside. If you want to use um, a little flat brush, that's probably a really good idea. I'm just honestly so caught up in the joy of painting this that I'm going to just continue with a little filbert brush. And I kind of like the wavy lines on my fence posts sometimes. You could have a little bit of light hitting if you want to have just like one side a little bit lighter then you can concentrate on adding your highlight to one side of your fence I'll take a little bit of gray along with my white this will give us so if you don't add the same amount of uh, highlights to every fence board. You can add a little sneak a little bit in here. And we'll be adding some roses. Have some tiny little fence po a little fence that continues through here too. Just very small. A little bit of white and blue. And then a little line. Add a little bit of that blue along the path too for a nice soft shadow. I'm going to add a little bit more to the clouds. So just very little paint. I'm just going to kind of go over and paint them the same that I did earlier. Just so they show up a little bit more. Dry my brush completely. And then just a gentle little scumble. Keeping that really calm look to my sky. And then a little bit more, tiny bit more white here. Dry my brush off completely again. Tap 
very lightly. I know the sound that it's making. Sounds like I'm pushing and scrubbing really hard. But it's very gentle. Okay, so now what I want to do is have, I'm going to mix a little bit of blue turquoise, green, black, light olive green. And I'm going to have some roses. So I'm just tapping in the, some greenery and leaves here. And this is why I'm not like overly concerned with, you know, making each fence post perfect. So the reason why I'm adding all the turquoise and the green and the black is then I get um, some cool shadows and some warm shadows. Look at that, just a little tap. Push and tap and you get little leaf shapes. And we can add some greenery down and around to kind of nestle those fence boards in there. Okay, I'm gonna take a go down to my smaller, smallest little filbert brush I have. I think it's a oh, this is a number two. I have one that's zero somewhere, but this one is really small. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, uh, rose and the pink, and just start by dabbing over purposely picking up a little bit of those greens and then even a little bit of black. That way you get uh, mid-tones and shadows. the way it pops against the turquoise background there. I want to be more generous with my roses up here. The next brush I'm going to be using is a number three liner. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to start adding some little half circles. You clean your brush off quite often. Okay, we're not out to make every single little petal. That's how it all comes together. Some of these might be a little bit more in shadow, so I'll use a bit more, a little bit less white and more color down on some of these. And then there'll be just some little buds here and there too, right?
Does he at least have a, more of a sense of foreground here? I'm gonna add some more light. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, warm yellow to my pink with white, and we'll add a few warm, warm sunlit highlights on these ones. More white. Rinsing my brush out, a little bit of white in with these greens. I'll go inside some of the leaves. a few down here. And then I'm actually going to take a little bit of black with the blue turquoise. I'm going to add some more shadows. Little dabs for shadows on a little bit more blue here. It'll look really pretty against the rose and the pink. And a little bit of white back over to the Blue violet. Add a bit more light to some of these fence poles. And I'm just picking up a little bit of the peach color, the rose, and some more white. I think this painting is just about done. And a little bit, uh, just a little bit of a shadow here on some of these fence posts on this side. And then a highlight with white on the other side. This is just going to make it stand out and show up a little bit more. It gives us that feeling that we're walking outside this fence and we're going to come around the corner and go up there. Could add a little railing here. That's nice as well. A little bit of white on the top of the railing. And a little bit of 
turquoise and both turquoises catch some extra color and cool shadows in here. I do have the turquoise peeking through. Um, I want to add a little bit more. Maybe a little bit thicker here and mix in some of the blue turquoise with it. little bit of white in with that. Oops. So we just get so many different light effects. Here, just tap and dab for the roses. So it looks like it follows up there. Well, I think this painting is all done. I really enjoyed, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of the blue and the both turquoises here for a little bit of a shadow right there and then come right on the outside with the white. I really enjoyed this one and I hope that you guys did too. Let me know down in the comments. I always like hearing from you guys. Add a little bit more sunlight here to the steps. to feel that warmth. Okay, well have a wonderful day everybody. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!